Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one red at a time, back with his good <clears throat> friend, Mr. Dan Bird. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, uh, I got to tell you, man, more and more people are going, I can't wait to have Dan back. Can't wait to have Dan back there. You're becoming a very mu a Sunday must watch, I think is what one person called it. So uh, hopefully lots of people are reaching out. And you're having fun with one red at a time followers. Yeah, it's fun. It's um, I, I'm getting a lot of good comments about my newsletter that I send as well. Um, I had one person sent me a note that said, it's refreshing to find something that's not trying to sell me something. Yeah, exactly. You know, biased one way or the other. It's just presenting the facts and the information. Yeah. And allowing them to decide. That's, that's right. what I like. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Make, make your own opinion. Yeah. And I could be wrong. You know, oh. I'm just presenting the information as I see it. Yeah. Yeah. You could look at the information and come up with a completely different answer. And that is. And, totally and in fact, a, a lot of it's not even my information. A lot of it's just information that I've researched. And I do that on Saturdays anyway for myself. There you go. And then I just share it with other people. So a lot of it is isn't necessarily things that I've just thought up on my own. Right. You know, it's a, it's all a learning process. You never stop learning. In fact, there you go. In the market. Yeah. So. So let's talk about, er so last week we had an interesting show kind of, right? We do a look back and a look forward. So last week's look forward, we talked about some earnings and two mm. that I remember, one was PayPal and one was Robinhood, right? I'm yeah, this. PayPal did pretty well, actually. Yeah, and that's, if you, people go back and watch the video, that was the one that you were uh, strongest about, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, oh! Bless you. Thank you. Sorry about that. I couldn't fight it off. So no I've problem. given you power if you want to share something. I hope you don't have COVID. Oh, no. Just now, I'll, now I'll have it. Yeah, exactly. You're going to catch it through soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I can I can share and show, this, show the chart for yeah. PayPal. I didn't look at Robinhood, so I'm not sure what they did. <clears throat> but I did see PayPal's uh, earnings were pretty good. Yeah. Can you see this? I can. So what I said last week, here's the earnings. And last week was before August started. Mm -hmm. so you can see August is right here. So we were, the chart was way back in here somewhere. Yep. What I said at the time was looking at the relative strength. So these two panels down here at the bottom, mm -hmm. the red one is the industry group. And the second session that we do today, I'm going to talk about industry groups and sectors and Mm -hmm. show you how to how to analyze some of those but the industry group that paypal is in has been had been strong you know it's it's actually moving up through the end of july mm -hmm. um moving into august so this 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 light vertical line right here is where we were last week right right so that's where august starts mm -hmm. so we were the day before august last week so just think of that everything before that is what it looked like so I said the industry group is gaining strength and PayPal is outperforming its peers. Correct. Yeah. So this one down here shows PayPal versus it, the peers in its own group. Yeah. And I said, based on that, and this is one way that I analyze stocks, if I am thinking about buying them before earnings. Now, buying owning a stock or buying it before earnings is dangerous. Yes. Because you never know what the earnings are going to do, unless you're a long-term investor and then it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. So what I said was, it looks like it's been outperforming its industry group. This has been trending up. And the institutions talked to management well ahead of earnings. Yeah, that, that was the on PayPal. And again, folks, the playlist is there. It's just Dan Bird, I believe, or Dan in stock, something like that. And you can go back and watch last week where he brought this chart up. And for me, it was that accumulation distribution, right? To me, it looked like yeah, Wall that's, Street. That's the other one up here. Accumulation distribution up here has been gaining strength. And and for me, it was really the last 90 days, they've been below trend and and they'd recently come back. So again, for me, it's like, wow, somebody talked to management, somebody right. liked what they were seeing. So right. that's what I took so away from last so week. So it's being accumulated and you can see the chart itself, the eight day cross the 21 and the 50 day back here. Yeah. Very right. cool. Third what week of July. So, I, so based on everything that I was seeing, I, I said, that's one that might be probably be safe to buy before earnings. And then here's the earnings right here. You can see it gapped up. Yeah. So what what else did you take away from last week? So if we were going to look back again on this uh, August 7th, look back over the last week, kind of an interesting week. Um, let's, look at, let's look at Robinhood real quick, just for fun. <clears throat> so Robinhood had a good good earnings too, it looks like. Well, actually what Robinhood had was a horrible earnings. 
Oh. But they announced that they were cutting 23% of their headcount. So they're oh. basically taking control of the expense line. Right. Um, which often happens so, when companies. So on Robinhood, when I when I look would look at this, the industry group is gaining strength, but Robinhood is underperforming as of you know before August 1st. Correct. Robinhood was underperforming its industry group. So that's one that I said that I probably would not buy before earnings. Yeah, we did look at it, and that's what you said. So yeah. 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 But in this case, it actually had a really nice run. Well, again, you can't you nobody's gonna foresee a 23% headcount cut. Yeah. You right. know, those are those are things that accountants do. It's like, hey, our, we're burning cash flow, right? We're negative cash flow. We got to get cash flow positive. Let's whack 23% ahead. Yeah, that's right. And that's and but, that's why, yeah. folks, you don't buy before earnings because you never know what's going to happen. You never know. I mean, it could have easily gone the opposite direction. So yeah. it's it's just dangerous to buy before earnings. And I, I don't even like to hold through earnings. And yeah, a as a trader, you don't like to hold. Right. As an investor, <clears throat> doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've said, I haven't said it lately on this show, but in the past, I've always said news changes everything. Yeah. So no matter what, what kind of analytics you put into it, news changes everything. I totally agree. And and again, uh, this is what happened, right? Robin Hood came out with horrible information, missed on earnings, missed on growth, lost 7 million, I don't know, subs or clients or whatever they call them. Uh, and then they said, you know, by the way, we're going to whack 23% of the headcount. We're going to be, we're going to work towards cash flow positive. And as a pump, somebody who wants to own the stock, your stock's going to go up. It doesn't feel good. Uh, but right sizing the business uh, will generally give you a positive reaction. Right. Because it should uh, trickle down to earnings. Eventually. Yeah. So again, so news cool. changes everything. I think it's pretty wise. What else do you got from last week looking back that was noteworthy? Okay. So this is the chart that I use that shows, you know, this is a 45 day chart or two month chart. Um, so this shows the S and P it was running in this channel right here, broke out of this top pink line, came back and touched it and took off. Notice the 10 year treasury yield down here. God, yeah. I mentioned, I mentioned, we've talked about this before, you know, here's the 8.6 CPI. Here's the 9.1. Next week, we're going to add another one on this. It's um, funny. It gapped, it gapped up. Uh, after the jobs number, it it gapped up, right? Because you know, after the jobs number, uh, good news is bad news. Exactly, right? good news is bad news. I've it talked means, about that a bunch. It means that the Fed is probably going to continue being hawkish, mm -hmm. and I mean, they might have good justification for it. But the economy seems to just be shrugging it off. Yeah. Well, right? we're going to find out on Wednesday, and that's we're going to be the we're find uh, out Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, that's that's topic number two. Wrapping so up here, last week, any other here's thoughts? The, here's the important thing right here is we're we're right now right against this resistance, yeah. Resistance level, which you can see it better. And there's the there's the VIX. Look at the VIX just falling off a cliff there, too. Yeah. Um, but you can see it more clearly in this in this chart and actually the next chart as well. Let me should let me do the next one first. This one here. So there's the one with the head and shoulders. It's funny if you go back three weeks in your playlist, you 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 actually proposed that you imagine this would be a reverse head and shoulders, and it is. Right. We don't. Have, it's not yet. It's no. not a reverse yet. You don't no. see a right shoulder there. Okay. I, I no, we don't we don't have the right shoulder yet. See okay. the right shoulder with a question mark. I do. I so here's the left. Know. Here's the left. This is an inverse head and shoulders. Mm -hmm. So there's the left shoulder right here. This is before that first bad CPI number, the eight point six one. We drop down here. Okay. Which, which coincidentally was the calculation of the head and shoulders from December. Yeah, which you can go back and watch in your playlist. You yeah. can go back and watch that. And I and I calculated that the target would be right around here. Yeah, you put that in early. That was really right. well done. Yeah. So if we if we get a an inverse head and shoulders, and we don't have one yet. Okay. So we we have to come back down. So we're hitting, this is called a neckline. Mm. We're hitting a neckline right here. It's starting to come down a little bit, but we have to get back down here and make a right shoulder. Okay. So we, we would like to see it come back down to 30, between 3,900 and 4,000, somewhere okay. in this area, mm. and then start heading back up. And if that happens, then we do have an inverse head and shoulders. Mm. And I've calculated the target on that. So it's the, it's the same distance from the head to the neckline, and then you measure from the neckline up. Okay. So that's what I did over here from the head to the necklines, 12.2%, 12.2% down, put it, put us right here. And that's just yeah. about where we went to. 
I love it. These are going to be recorded. So we're going to see how this evolves over the weeks to come. Right. So this, this would put us at about 4690, just below 4700 right okay. here. I like it. <clears throat> this is what I've been saying all along. We're going to go back to the highs by the end of the year. Yes, you have. You are, you are, uh, yes, it's funny. I, I talk to macro economist folks in, in wall street folks, uh, every Wall Street person I talk to who's focused on stocks all think we're going to end the year at the high. So it's it's yeah. going to be interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, so it, it would be good to come back. Mm -hmm. It would be healthy, actually, to healthy, come back yeah. and make that right shoulder. Okay. And then go up and break through the neckline. But we don't have to do that. We could just continue straight up. Now, if we get a CPI number below 8.3, which is what I predicted last week. Wow. I still can't believe you're putting that on blast. 8.3. 8.3 below okay. 8. All right. All right. The consensus now is 8.7. It is 8.7. I saw that this morning. Yeah. Yeah. But if we do get something like that, I mean, we could easily just. Well, wow. you know what? Let's, you know, let's, let's poke at that a little bit. Cause actually I've been really leery of making a call for, a, for just, it didn't. Right. I've, as you know, I'm, I'm generally, I have an opinion. I haven't mm -hmm. really had a strong opinion about no. this. Number. You know yeah. Opinion? Yeah. Yeah. You've known me for a long time. Um, I haven't had a great one, but I finally figured it out this morning. I do think headline, which is the nine one, which is yeah. now year eight, three. I think that could show some softness. I think in eight, three drops not happening, but I, but I actually think core goes up. That's possible because the, the months that are dropping off are shallow are shallow. The next, yes. The next three are, are more shallow months that are dropping off. Yeah. So that that could um, affect the trend line. Yeah. So I actually, it's it, this is now what I feel good about because I did not feel good about it to this morning. I think that headline could go down, gas could go down. I don't. I think it's a little early for food, but maybe some. Um, but I think core goes up, and I think core is a bigger problem. So since we're on this topic, mm -hmm. here's here's the commodities. This is yeah. a two, these are two month charts. Yeah. For so all, but, far, all but natural left. gas. The far left of each of these charts is basically the nine one number. Right. Yeah. All down. And June sixteenth was the bottom. Yeah. Um, so you can see, and, and also, you know, a lot of this was not reflected in the nine one CPI number, but will be reflected in the the one we get this week. So let's let's just play this out. Let's assume. We're both right. Let's assume you get your eight three headline. Yeah. But core goes from five nine, which was last month's print, to like six three. So core goes up, headline comes down. Right. What do you think happens? Market explodes. Which higher. way? Really? All because of headline. Yeah, because of headline. Man, the market. Because the market weird. knows that the headline was going to impact uh core eventually, anyway. So if headlines going down, core is going to eventually go down too. Oh, well, I think that's an interesting bet. I okay. All right. Okay. So so these are these are the commodities. So you can see natural gas actually made a big recovery over here. It did. And gold gold came back a little bit as well. Um, but you know, for most of June, yeah, and July for that matter, soybeans, copper, sugar, I mean, all the corn. Uh, crude oil, heating oil, everything fell off a cliff. Yeah. Wheat. Look at gasoline. I've got a chart just for gasoline. Yeah. Look at that. I get it. Gas is down 40 some days in a row. I get it. I get it. I understand. That's why I, yeah. that, no, that's why I, th I think you get a lower CPI. I think eight, three. That's a, that's a bold call. I like it. I'm it's a going fan. To be, it's going to be a big surprise. I think. All right. I like it. Now it's recorded. Now we get to see and, you get to brag okay. next week or I get to make fun of you. It's all good. Or or I get to say, see, I told you I, I could be wrong. Yeah, exactly. I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> you said that all along. I could be wrong. Yeah. So as, as we here's wrap up. Here's yeah. the dollar, which is, um, you know, another one that we should be watching. I agree. Yeah. Because agree. last week in my newsletter, I said, you know, there are three things to watch. One is inflation. Um, one is the 10 year treasury. And one is the dollar. I agree. If the dollar goes below 103, which is the 21 day moving average right here, mm -hmm. then, and if all three of those things happen, if we get peak inflation, we get a, a 10 year that keeps going down and we get do a dollar that weakens. Yeah, it could. I mean, the whole market's going to explode. Okay. 
<laughs> things so, to watch. Yeah, and here's gold. You can see gold actually is inverse to the dollar. Mm -hmm. of so if if the if the dollar starts to weaken, then gold might be a place to think about. Okay, I like it. And then the other thing that I saw, which I found interesting, and this was in my newsletter as well, is on the short-term charts. So these are 65-minute charts. Hmm. Uh, so each one of these bars represents 65 minutes. Okay. And 65 minutes, the reason for that number is that it calculates out to six bars per day. Got it. That makes okay. Sense. So six of these equals one day. Okay. But if you look at this, this one here is the NASDAQ 100. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I look for a lot for those folks out there that want to understand charting. Mm -hmm. I think one thing I look at for a lot is divergences, mm -hmm. negative divergence or positive divergence. And what that means is when the, when the price goes up, like it's doing here with the NASDAQ, but the momentum indicators go down. So here's the relative strength index. Mm -hmm. And this is the um, price performance oscillator. Mm -hmm. When the momentum indicators go down as the price is going up, that implies that the, the trend is weakening, okay. that it's running out of steam, basically. Mm -hmm. So keep, that, keep in mind that we're right at that resistance level Okay. that might send us down to that right shoulder. Mm -hmm. And it looks like momentum is starting to, to wane here. Mm -hmm. So this might be an advanced indication that the market might be heading lower. Very cool. This is the S&P, same thing. Yeah. Negative divergence on the S&P. S&P price went up, but the momentum indicators were going yeah. down. Going down. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be flat heading into Wednesday. Yeah, I think they probably will. I mean, I think especially after what happened um, it, on the June CPI number when yeah. everybody got whacked. Yeah. And everyone thought that one was going to be peak inflation. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, yeah, I think now now the 9-1 number, the market actually went up. You can actually see it right here. So here's the 8-6, these gaps down right here. Yep. And then the 9-1 number was right in here. The market went down and then headed higher. Yeah. Well, peak inflation. Well, so, it's, it's all, it, yeah, it's Jerome Powell saying these, whatever. Anyways, who cares? Yeah. So do me a favor, show your newsletter, because I want to do our next video about what to look for next week. Okay. Um, yeah, let me show. Let me show the newsletter real quick. So this is the uh, the newsletter. Um, if anybody wants to get a copy each week, there's no charge for it. Um, if you don't want it anymore, just send me a note and I'll take you off. It's no big deal. Send me an email to breakpointtrading at gmail dot com. And cool. there's the there's the gas chart yes. right there. Thought yeah. I put that in here. I mean, that's just falling off a cliff. Yep. Um, the the market is in a confirmed uptrend, according to uh, IBD Investors Business Daily. Here, I put cartoons in there every week, and I love this one that I found: <laughs> the Inflation Reduction Act. Yes, just drop some taxes on it. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, tax hikes. Tax hikes. Just adding to the fire. It, it's it's funny that they call it the Inflation Reduction Act thinking that most Americans are stupid. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And don't, and don't realize that spending more is actually what is causing inflation. Don't worry. It's only another $400 billion. What's, yeah. What's, what's it's that causing thing? inflation. It's not going to reduce inflation. Totally agree. And then there's there was an interesting article. I don't know if you got to it at the end of my newsletter mm -hmm. regarding crypto. I did. I read it Celsius. And yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I actually had, re I had read that uh, before your newsletter. It's, it's right. sad. It's very sad. Very sad what's happening with uh, the people for Celsius, but just in general, in crypto in general, it's a it's a ripe environment for scam artists to come in and create Ponzi schemes. Yep. Um, and one of the things that they said was, you know, we're a safe investment because we don't do fractional reserve banking mm -hmm. like yep. the banking industry does. Well, the, the, as the, if the, as if trying to scare people thinking that banks are not safe. Yeah. Well, well, the CEO of Celsius was frequently photographed with a shirt that says "Banks aren't your friend." Right. What? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think Celsius is? It's a crook. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Yeah. So I I had done I had done this uh, before. I did a whole write up on fractional reserve banking a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I thought it might be a good time to revisit that topic mm -hmm. to try to help educate people on what fractional reserve banking is. Yep. 
I know you understand it, but a lot of people don't understand that, you know, when, when they put a thousand dollars into the bank in three steps, it becomes $3,500. Exactly. Yep. And 2,500 that is, doesn't exist. Yeah, of course. All right. It's, it's only, ba and this is just three steps. I mean, this, this will continue until this gets down to zero. Mm -hmm. So this thousand dollars could end up being six or $7,000 in the system. Pretty easily. Yeah. Right. Pretty easily. And that's fine. What it means is it allows our economy to grow faster. Mm -hmm. It allows people to take out a loan and uh, renovate their homes mm -hmm. and hire contractors to help them do that, which you know helps people make money. Uh, contractors make money. Mm -hmm. They buy materials. So the materials people make money. Mm -hmm. um, it allows people to buy new things, mm -hmm. you know, update their furniture and update their cars or whatever they might want to do with those loans. And that helps the economy grow. And in fact, it helps it grow faster than if we did not have a fractional reserve banking system. Mm -hmm. And if you went completely with crypto, it would be difficult to, to do something like fractional reserve banking because mm -hmm. it's based on, on um, blockchain. Mm -hmm. So every, every step, every dollar of crypto that's in there is accounted for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the pro, and I put the two pros and cons in the newsletter. The pros are it allows our economy to grow faster than it would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. The con is that it's it relies on all of these people paying back their loans. Yeah. As long as they do that, then this will work just fine. And by the way, fractional reserve banking has been around be, longer than the United States has been around. Yeah. All right. So as long as they pay their loans back, it works just fine. But mm -hmm. if they stop, if they decide not to pay their loans or they can't pay their loans, Correct. like what happened in 2008, mm -hmm. then we then we can risk collapse of the whole system. Correct. And that's what happened in 2008. Mm -hmm. That's why the system came close to collapsing was because they had bad real estate loans. Yep. That goes back to the Clinton era mm -hmm. when people thought that, you know, owning a home should be a right and everyone mm -hmm. should be able to own a home. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, you know, came close to collapsing the system then. But yep. fractional reserve banking in and of itself is not a bad thing. Oh, and mm -hmm. by the way, up to $250,000 of your money in the bank is insured mm -hmm. by the FDIC. Correct. The, the Celsius network didn't didn't insure anybody's money. So no, just made great promises that never came to fruition. And were no, I, I, I encourage everybody. If they already are getting the newsletter or if they send me a note to get it, I'll send you last week's copy. I highly encourage you to read that article about mm -hmm. Celsius. Mm -hmm. It's scary. It's sad. It's un it's unfortunate. But everyone needs to understand where we are with crypto. I'm not saying that crypto is bad and blockchain certainly is a great technology. Mm -hmm. It's just that where we are in that cycle is ripe for scams. I agree. So, you have to be very careful about that. Do yourself a favor, folks. Reach out to breakpointtrading at gmail.com. Get the newsletter, get the cartoons, have some fun. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> let me see. Let me see if I have uh, there's three more charts here. Oh, here's the uh tenure. Yeah, it's here's, the, here's, the, here's the inverted yield. Crashing. <clears throat> three month hasn't inverted yet, though. Nope. But they but all everything else is inverted. So it's officially inverted, which usually predicts a recession in six months. Mm-hmm. And then we I, we looked at the commodity groups and we looked at gasoline. So very cool. All right, we'll look at we'll on the next session we'll look at uh, some sectors. I'll show you how to find sectors that are performing well, and then the industry groups in those sectors. And I'll point out some interesting ones that I've noticed when I was going through this yesterday. And then I'll end that with a um, with a stock, which I, we don't usually do. I don't usually do that. And I'll make okay. sure to mention that I am not a financial advisor. This is just for educational purposes. If you want to take my advice, it's up to you. Yeah, yeah. You're completely on your own. I'm not making any recommendations. So if you lose money, that's all on you. There you go. But I will I will show a stock that I think has tremendous promise. All right. I'm interested. Thanks, buddy. Take care. All right. See ya. Mm -hmm.